Hola community, it's Pablo Vasquez with another update of what happened in last week in the Blender world. <laughs> Blender Conference LA, the first edition ever, got postponed. We're gonna see each other on next year, 2021. We all know why, it's just not a good idea to gather a lot of people nowadays. <laughs> Blender 2.83 reached Beacon 2. What does it mean? It's the five stages of a Blender release. The first one is to get everything in, just dumping all the big features. The second stage, which is the one we are now, it's mainly about polishing those uh, changes, those big changes. So it might have new features, but they're related to those bigger changes. Beacon 3, though, is the one where it's just only bug fixes. Beacon 4 is even more of a freeze point where you can only critical bug fixes. And Beacon 5 is when the release happens. It's like a two or three day uh, where Blender gets uh, is frozen for uh, documentation, for the website updates, and for the actual building the actual releases that are gonna uh, be the final thing that people download from the website. Why is this relevant? Well, because if it doesn't make it to Blender source for Beacon 2, so last week, it will be postponed to Blender 2.84? Nope. Blender 2.9, remember, that is the next release that it's uh, planned to happen around August. If everything is okay, <laughs> there is still a planet uh, by then. No, of course there will be. Of course, of course. Positive. Volume object. It's a new object type that you're gonna find when you do Shift A to add a new object. You're gonna find volume. You can use a VDV, an op open VDV object, or make an empty one so you can add your own uh, open VDV data to it. You can recognize it by its cute little cloud icon, and in the properties uh, editor, you're gonna find all the settings for this object type. This new object type is supported by all engines within Blender, the Workbench engine, EV, and the Cycles. Virtual reality. VR has landed in Blender. This is the first milestone. It's the initial support. It's uh, bringing the library. It's OpenXR, so it's uh, compatible with all the devices that are supporting those uh, open source drivers. The first milestone is to do scene inspection. So you can look around, even walk around with positional tracking if your headset supports it. So you can actually, now that we're all locked up in our rooms, you can make a new one and just look with your headset. Using it is fairly straightforward. You just need to enable the built-in add-on. It's not enabled by default because it's uh, exposing it right now. It's a bit experimental, but it comes built-in Blender. So you just need to enable it. And in the 3D view sidebar, you're going to find the VR tab. Video sequence editor, got disk cache. So if you remember in the previous Blender version, there were some improvements on the cache. Well, some improvement got completely rewritten the cache system in Blender the video sequence editor. You can now see um, live when it's actually caching and it can cache multiple levels. So, so much better. Now this got improved because this system now allows you to save the, that cache into your hard drive, into the, your disk for more, uh, for faster playback or more consistent playback, especially for those trips that are not really possible to see in real time when you have many um, layers of things uh, stacked up. This feature has its own section in the user preferences where you can enable it, have a limit per how many gigs you want to use in your hard drive, and also that directory where you want to store this cache. This is pretty exciting because this first implementation for this caching can be used in the future for maybe thumbnails for your strips or replacement for the proxy system in Blender. Um, it can have so many options, basically. It's very, very flexible. So pretty exciting for the future of this feature. Feature, 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 feature. <laughs> the user interface side of the sequence editor also got improvements. The strips are now, uh, they look a bit more modern. They have a, there is easier to recognize which uh, strip you're working on, which one is active, which state they're in. The handles are much uh, smaller, but the action zone is the same. Um, so it's, it's just the same as before. It just looks a bit smaller, so it doesn't get over with the rest of the overlays. It has so many, but like the waveforms are also drawn better. And now they react to the volume of that uh, waveform, that audio strip uh, has so many improvements. You can check on the, on the commit logs just to see what changed. A bunch of fixes were done in the user interface as well. For example, in theming, you can now change the color of the view aligned gizmo. Uh, for example, when you're rotating the view, that white ring, it was hard coded to be white. So if you had a white or bright background, you wouldn't see it. Now you can change the color. You can now also change the color and size of the checkerboard pattern. 
that uh, the little squares that you see when something is transparent like in the image editor the sequencer now you can change which are the colors and uh, how big they are and lastly a fix actually this is a setting that wasn't exposed now you can change the grid color of the movie clip editor under the blender menu there is a system section with uh, things that were accessible before but they were not exposed any in any way for example you can reload the scripts from there and get some stats on memory you can open the debug menu which is used a lot by developers to try hidden features or very experimental ones and some more but this is more for blender or add-on developers and this one is pretty exciting it is experimental but it's the initial implementation of a new search menu within blender is a completely different approach so far the biggest advantage to this new menu is that it shows not only the operator name and shortcut like the previous one it shows the menu where you can find it so if you search for like monkey it's gonna show add for shift a mesh monkey with the monkey icon in the future the idea is that you should also be able to right click add to quick favorites or uh, right click uh, change shortcut for example and in our papri section wrist pencil in the opacity modifier there is a new hardness option that will override the hardness in the whole stroke not only in uh, per point base and a fix but a very nice one is the fade option for fading objects now we'll take the viewport color into account and not just fade to black always it makes the objects hard to see otherwise and in the rigging side of things in weight paint mode there is a new lock relative option okay this one i gotta read it sorry this checkbox alters how weights are displayed and painted weights are presented as if all locked vertex groups were deleted and the remaining deformed groups normalized this mode also allows temporarily viewing non-normalized weights as if they were normalized without actually changing the values okay that's that's uh, that, uh, that one i understand but <laughs> i need to get more familiar with rigging rigging is just like a completely different world and that is all for this recap there has been other bug fixes improvements like fluid simulation now when you cancel it's gonna cancel right away instead of waiting for that one frame to finish before cancelling so it feels a bit more snappy and so many other fixes that are impossible to to, to to name them all remember we are doing live streams where we get to interview um developers artists and talk about the workflow we already did one for sculpting for gris pencil for physics with the developer of manta flow that was super fun and it's just gonna be amazing so stay tuned for more content on the blender foundation youtube channel and i'll talk to you in the next video bye bye wash your hands and stay home